Hello and welcome back. Today I'm playing around with some drums. Everything you can hear, all the drum sounds are coming out of the modules in this case. There's no sample players, no drum modules. I've got a kick drum, I've got some hi-hats, I've got a snare, um, I've got some kind of bukla bongo-y tuned low percussion and this kind of metallic percussion effect. So I've just been messing around. I'm gonna mess around for another minute or so and then I'll strip everything out and I'll build it back up bit by bit into another pattern. And I'll explain how I made each of the drum sounds, give you some ideas for how you can create some drum sounds from scratch in modular. I'm just going to break this all down and I'll start building it up again voice by voice. I'll make a slightly different pattern and let's see how we get on. Okay, so I've stripped everything out again um, and I'm going to build things up one voice at a time. Um, in the intro jam, I was kind of mixing in the case. I was using a bit of the dynamics modules. I was using some effects as well. Um, when I build this back up, I'm going to take the sounds individually into my um, audio software and do a bit of mixing and balancing in there um, just to get things kind of mix nicely. Um, so let's start with a kick drum. Um, the simplest way to make a kick drum is a sine wave, which you can use a pitch envelope and then a, an envelope through a VCA or an LPG. Um, so I'm going to use a pair of envelopes and I'm going to use this IntelliGel 1U utility oscillator. I'm going to click the sine output there into the IntelliGel 1U LPG, passive LPG. And I'm going to take that output directly into uh, this channel of my sound card. And I'm going to take the BeatStep Pro drum trigger voice one. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take that into the gate of input of these two envelopes on stages, which are just really simple decay envelopes. I'm going to take this one to the LPG, and before I connect the other one to the pitch, this is what this kick drum sounds like. So we can tune it. to a nice low frequency. Um, now at the moment it's just a sine wave through an LPG. I can play with the shape of that envelope, it won't really have that much effect because the LPG decay is what's giving it the kind of nice rounded sound. But if I take a second envelope, which I'm going to set to a slightly shorter time, take that to the pitch input of the oscillator, and I'll just take the envelope to a slightly more linear form. First of all, you'll hear this. Here it gives it that big zappy kind of sound. And as I bring the shape of that envelope curve down, you can kind of get the kind of transient sounding how you want it. Um, it works best with a, I find, with a time slightly shorter on the pitch than on the decay. And you can sort of dial in a bit of clickiness with the, um, the shape of that envelope. So this is more of a exponential curve. Um, so that's kind of it. Next up, was a snare. The snare I'm going to cheat slightly in terms of patching from scratch and I'm going to use Platts or the Roved from Plum Audio which is the one new version and I'm going to use the snare drum model in there. Let's take a trigger from the second voice. Um, but just to kind of warm it up slightly and give it a bit of character I'm going to run it through the music thing spring reverb. So I'm going to take the output of that in here and let's just take the output of that into the other channel of my audio interface here. So now second trigger on the BeatStep Pro should now trigger the snare. And I'm going to take an LFO from 
oct over here and I'm just going to take that to the frequency modulation input and that will just, just vary the tuning very slightly with every hit. It's quite subtle. You can dial in the amount of the sort of snappy sound. Oh, that's the decay time rather, and then the balance between the the white noisy bit and the tony bit. Let's keep it about there, and then with the spring reverb. See, it gives it a nice bit of texture. Let's dial that feedback down a bit. Um, let's just start putting a little pattern in here. Cool. Uh, next up will be hi-hats. So um, for this, I'm just going to use white noise from the Takao Bar LFO that's got a white noise output. I'm going to run that through the Duranalog filter 8 and I'm going to take a bandpass filter output from there into a VCA. Again, I'm using the, these IntelliGel 1U utility modules here, which are really handy for this kind of thing. So into that input the VCA. I'm going to take another short, snappy envelope from Stages. And going to take the output of that envelope to the CV on the VCA and I'm going to take the output of that VCA directly into the next channel of my sound card. So now, there we go. So by playing with the filter cutoff you can kind of tune it in. By playing with this decay time And by playing with the resonance on the filter, you can kind of give it a more metallic kind of effect. Quite a nice electronic hi-hat there. Um, now, to make a off uh, an open hi-hat, because that's, that's a kind of closed, quite a short closed hi-hat, you can do a little trick to get a, an open hi-hat from the same sound just by modulating the envelope decay time. So let's take another gate from the next channel on the BeatStep Pro. And I'm going to run that through an attenuator. I'm going to use the Quadrat uh, just to sort of tame, tame down that gate voltage a bit. And then I'll take that into the CV input on that envelope. So let's just program in every step on the closed hi-hat and let's put gates on where we want the open hi-hat to be. I'm just going to put them on the off beats. And now, let's just bring that down slightly. Now, if I bring up this attenuator on Quadrat, those offbeats are basically lengthening the decay time on that envelope, giving us a kind of close and open effect. You can kind of dial in the precise relationship with the times with that attenuator. as well. Cool. Now the next sound that I had in the previous demo, I had a couple of sounds. I've got the Make Noise Optimix here, which is two-channel LPG, um, something I've wanted for quite a while. It's a classic West Coast kind of circuit, and you can ping that LPG with a gate, and it will ring out, and it will give you that kind of classic Buchla Bongo West Coast kind of sound. I've got a couple of options for making uh, sounds to go through there. The first one, I'm going to use the Kaliosk through a wave folder. Um, this is the Danny sound module at the top. So I'm going to take a sine wave out of there, take it into the wave folder, take that. I'm actually going to use the, yeah, the top channel of the Optimix here onto the input. I'm going to take that output into my next mixer channel, or next sound card channel rather. 
Um, and now, if I fade this up, that's the kind of raw sound. That's the wave folder. But if I take a gate now, in fact, what I'm going to do, what I was doing in the in the uh, intro jam was I was using the Zulaira repetitor to do some trigger patterns for the percussion. So let's just take um, gonna take the eighth channel of my Beat Step Pro into the beat input here, and I'm just gonna put semi quavers on there so that this will now trigger this. Cool. And then I'm gonna take the take the mother trigger, which is the kind of first of the four gate patterns into the um, strike input here. And that gives us a nice kind of tuned percussion sort of effect. It's just striking that Vectrol LPG, which gives it a nice kind of ring and decay. And with the damping control here, you can control how long that decay is basically, kind of how, how long it rings out for. Now to get a bit of timbral variation, I'm gonna take a copy of that trigger I'm going to put, take that into the R&D step, which is a sample and hold module, which is going to give us some random stepped voltages. And let's take that into the wave folder CV amount. So now every time that sound is struck, it's going to adjust the amount randomly of that wave folding. Let's tune it up slightly and adjust the damping slightly like that and bring the other drums back in. And then I use the other channel of the, Opt uh, the Optimix to do another similar kind of sound, but this time I'm going to use a much more atonal and abrasive kind of input. Uh, which I'm going to generate using digital ring mod from the Joe Analog Compare 2. So I'm going to take two more oscillators. I'm going to take the through zero FM uh, EM129 oscillator from Danny Sound into one side of the comparator, the Compare 2. And I'm going to take the Danny Sound multimode lighter filter with the resonance up, so that's oscillating. I'm going to take that into the other side of Compare 2. And I'm going to take the XOR output exclusive or which is one of the logic outputs and I'm going to take that into the input of the second LPG and just take that output into my next sound card channel and again if I bring up the level here you can hear that's a much more abrasive kind of sound uh, and I can get a bit of motion happening there by and take another LFO. And I'm going to attenuate it through the quadrat. And I'm going to go into the shift, which will just move the comparator window around. So this effect is basically taking these two sine waves, using the comparator to generate pulse waves, which are then via this logic gate spitting out this much more kind of metallic harsh. It's a it's digital ring modulation, basically. Um, so yeah, it sounds like this. And that's with a bit of LFO moving that window around to give it a bit of... A bit of variation. Now it sounds pretty unpleasant like that, but again, if we take a gate pattern, let's take, uh, let's take Child 2 from the Zillara Repetitor into the strike input. And again, I'm just going to mute the other drum parts. And to get an even more variety, let's do the same trick where I take the strike. Okay, take a copy of that to another channel of the sample and hold. And let's... Uh, just the frequency of one of these two oscillators that's going into the ring mod thing. So 
So now we've got this nicely varying percussion effect. And again, if I can just play with this damping, I can let it ring out. And the other thing I did to keep the pattern interesting was take another LFO out of Oct and take that to the Gel 2 input. And this will basically move the position around within the bar so that the rhythm will be changing as it plays. This is just the first of the New World rhythms in here. Let's bring the other drums back in. So there we go. Let's just try another little rhythm in the Survivor Repetitor. Nicely kind of varying patterns with this LFO controlling the position. Got lots of modulation on the input sounds and if I just bring that damping down a bit, make them a bit shorter and snappier. I've used up quite a lot of modules obviously to make these sounds, but what I'll tend to do is record a bunch of this, multi-track it and use it as the basis for track, then I can basically create some samples, some loops. Pretty quick way of getting some basic percussion sounds together, the kick drum especially I think is a really nice sound, it's really, really tweakable. White noise through a bandpass filter makes a pretty effective soft shakery kind of hi-hat and with this low pass gate and analog inputs you can do all sorts of stuff the other other kind of classic bucola bongo techniques are fm fm craziness through that lpg and the trick is really to keep modulating those that input sound so that every strike is slightly different But there you go, that's just a quick look at how to make some analogue drum sounds from scratch in a modular case. Hopefully it's given you a few ideas for things to try. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Um, check back soon for more stuff. Check the previous videos if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.